Let's see, 30 active, 10 spontaneous. I didn't actually look to see. Okay, we need more active than spontaneous anyway. The buttered wall challenge. One of the best parts of living on campus like this is being able to come back for lunch. Because I'll be damned if I'm not going to take advantage of a free lunch now and then. I've got my mind on a nice sandwich as I enter the Latin house. Welcome home. Have you decided to cast away the classes of the day? What the holy hell, dude? Rikash is standing in the common area, completely covered in paint. He doesn't look like he's wearing a shirt. What? This? Oh, I think I finally found the ultimate paintbrush. Come, see my room. The idea struck me and I had to try it. Is your room the only place you tried it? Hmm. Oh yes, I thought my walls would be the best place to try it. Is... Is that paint safe to be on skin? Well, paint can cover many things, why not a body? Uh, dude, pretty sure some paints are toxic. Oh, I should probably clean off. Um, could you... Um, never mind. Rikash takes off upstairs with a slightly worried look on his face. Skip. That dude is crazy. I mean, flat out. I think he wanted my help, but I'm not getting myself mixed up in that train wreck this time around. Dujanik's gonna freak hard enough as it is, and the best way to enjoy that explosion is from the sidelines. A quick lunch and I'm out of the house quick as I can. The weird thing is that I didn't really hear any water running, just some weird thumping from the bathroom. I have no idea what could be going on with that. Just another day as I head out the door to my glasses. Oh, good morning, Max. Sally, good morning. On your way to class as well? Looks like Sally left just before I did. I jog a bit to catch up with her as we make our way towards campus. Actually, I've got to get down to the farming garden. My boss wants me to get some serious weeding done, and I don't want to be there all day. Oh yeah, you work there, don't you? How'd you land that job? My dad runs a vegetable farm. It seemed like a pretty natural way to make some money aside from my scholarships. I actually started there over the summer. Helped me make some moving in money. That makes sense. Hey, think you could put in a good word for me? I'm not sure how I'd get into a job like that otherwise. Well, it's a pretty active job. There's a lot of running around or hard labor to be done. I've got a day of weeding ahead of me, for instance, and that's not easy at all. Get used to running around and keeping yourself in shape. We can teach you how to garden properly, but if you don't have the stamina to keep up, you'll never get a job there. Well, I can certainly try to be active. There you go. It might not seem related, but the football team needs a water person. It'll definitely get you up on your feet keeping up with those guys. And the thing is, our farm doesn't have a good automatic irrigation system, so you'll probably find yourself running around the farm watering the plants like you would the football players. Though I'd probably get more intelligent conversation from the plants. Ha! Huh. Ouch! Be nice! Though it is always nice to talk to the plants, it helps them grow. Yep, that's why I'm working on my active being a water football water person. <laughs> We've almost made it to the main buildings. I'm just about to ask where Sally and I will split up, when I notice that we're actually right in front of the campus cafe. Speaking of work, isn't this where Isabella works? We both look inside the window to see Isabella shuffling around the relatively busy cafe, one plate in her hand. Just as we're looking in, though, she looks out. As soon as she spots us, she beams and waves us over with her free hand. Sally waves back and starts to walk towards the door. Isabella walks the plate over and puts it down in front of a large man in a jersey. Oh great, looks like Chad is here too. Ain't that just perfect. Uh, I don't know if I'm up for dealing with Isabella's boyfriend. Hey Max, you coming? Sally's already at the door looking back at me. I take another look inside. Isabella's still talking to Chad. She won't notice if I just bail. It's not like I've got any reason to run, though. Maybe I can show that asshole Chad that he's got some real competition. Or we can just, you know, hold hands with Sally. <laughs> Instead. <laughs> Forget about Chad altogether. Ah... 
Yeah, yeah, hold the door. I'm not gonna pussyfoot around just because that stupid jerk is in there. Morning, Isabella! Hey guys, good to see you. Grab a table, I'll be over in a sec. She winks at us and heads behind the counter to grab someone else's order. Sally and I make our way over to one of the few free tables. It just so happens it's right next to the table Chad's sitting at. You must be Chad? Got it in one. You seen me on the field? Um, we're actually Isabella's roommates. Oh. Yeah, she's told me about you guys. He sticks out his hand and Sally shakes it. As I move over to shake his hand, he retracts it and just gives me a nod instead. Sup, bro? I just nod in return. He gives me a smirk like I played right into his hand and turns back to his own plate. Have I mentioned I hate that dude? <laughs> yeah, you and everybody else. Sally and I settle into our own table just as Isabella comes over. What'll it be? Soy latte, please. What have you got for breakfast? The basics, eggs and bacon, some pretty good toast. Yeah, that sounds good. Coming right up. You guys say hi to Chad? Yep, just introduced ourselves. I try to grin. I think I grimace. <laughs> How's it going, Max? Oh, you know, I'm... Hey, sweet cheeks, wanna grab me another coffee? You serve up the best stuff. Oh yeah, sure thing. You gotta start paying for it, though. Boss says you don't get a free ride here. What? Come on. Oh, shut up. You'll get my discount, at least. Wait, there's a discount? No dice, Mr. Slick. Rip off. Isabella goes to get Chad's coffee. As she goes past him, he takes a chance to swat her once on the ass. I, su I guess that's supposed to be playful. He smirks at me just after he's done it. Hey, watch it, Chad. Not while I'm on duty, remember? Sorry, cutie. I guess I'm supposed to rise to that bait, but I'm not honestly sure if it's worth it. He probably wants me to start something, but that won't get me anywhere but thrown out. And given his size, possibly dead. I really can't believe this guy. Fine, if the only way to show Isabella that Chad's a jackass is to play his game, then whatever. Game on. Hmm, I could flirt with Isabella directly and see what Chad does. Oh, I just had a thought. I could try the indirect approach and try to make Isabella jealous. Throw a few compliments at Sally and see what she does. Besides, it's not like I don't like Sally, too. Which tactic to take? Oh, good grief. Um, well, I don't want to get points with Isa. Now, I do want to compliment Sally, but is she going to take that the wrong way? It depends on Max. Max can sometimes be like, no, but I, like... You really are beautiful and stuff, and then she'll be like, ah. Ah, we'll roll the dice. Oh, yay, rolling the dice worked. Yeah, the indirect approach is best. The most effect with the least trouble caused. So how are classes going, Sally? You seem like you've definitely got your stuff together. I figure you're probably acing it. Huh, I wish. I don't do too badly. I think my GPA is doing all right. I'm taking a few sociology classes this quarter, and it's kind of busting my... Busting my hump. Busting your hump? You'll get it for sure. You've got a good head on your shoulders. Well, thanks for saying so. Here you go, Chad. Drink it slow. I won't be off shift for a few hours. Strike now. Besides, if worse comes to worse, you can always just flirt with your professor. He sees those big, pretty green eyes coming for him. You've got an A-plus easy. What? I would never! Sally reaches out to slap at me playfully. I notice Isabella looking at our table with a smile, but I make very sure only to look at Sally. Oh please, you got feminine wild for miles! A pretty blonde with a nice body? You'd have him wrapped around your finger in a second. Sally may be protesting, but she's blushing lightly while she does it. Uh-huh. I would never do that, though! What's the point of coming to college if I can't actually make it? Okay, okay, I hear ya. Like I said, that's a worst case scenario. I'm sure you'll get it just fine. Well, thanks. Here's your food, Max. Latte for Sally. As she hands me my food, she makes sure to lean extra far over the table. Meanwhile, I make sure I'm only looking at Sally. <laughs> oh, this is so awkward. Uh, oh, thanks, Isabella. Thanks, Isabella! Oh yeah, it's working. Chad frowns at Isabella, then at me, then at Isabella again. 
As soon as Isabella figures out I'm not going to rise to her bait, she goes back to behaving normally, but there's definitely some disappointment there. What about you? How are your classes going? Oh, I think I'm doing alright. Honestly, though, I don't think my grades are going to be that good. I'm not the greatest at studying. Oh, come on! You just had to put your mind to it! You've got the right energy for it. You have a band, right? That takes a lot of dedication and hard work, am I right? Yeah, I did really good on my grades last time. I, I want to take a break. Yeah, that's true. So, focus on studying with that dedication. You'll get ahead in no time. See, didn't I say you're more than smart enough? You're not a dummy either, Max. You may convince me of that yet. We continue to talk about our classes as I eat. Isabella may have come around a few more times, but honestly, I kind of stopped noticing while I was talking to Sally. Wow. Once I finish up, we make our exit. We both wave goodbye to Isabella, who waves goodbye a little half-heartedly. Sally and I go in opposite directions after leaving the cafe. I have to wonder if Sally caught on to what I was going for when I first started up. Then again, I think by the time I was done, I'd forgotten what I was going for anyway. Oh well, I'll think about it later. Yeah, you gotta think about that, boy. Aw, oh, man. I don't know why, Max just has like the cutest scenes with people. <laughs> Every time, it's just like, oh man, that's so cute. Oh. oh, this one. We'll be skipping this. <laughs> It's nice to get the place to myself once in a while. The house is quiet tonight. Dominic is at a housing authority meeting that should take most of the night. Isabella's out with Chad. Rikash... Rikash wandered out the door earlier in the evening, wearing all black and holding a paint roller. I have no idea what he's up to, and I don't think I want to know. Sally's at a sit-in on campus, protesting some guy's illegal imprisonment. I didn't ask many questions about it. I don't really care about that stuff. In the meantime, I've got the place to myself, which means I can finally make some noise without somebody getting on my case about it. A little nap on the common room couch to recharge the batteries, then I'll plug in the amp and really jam for a while. I'm feeling pretty pumped as I put my plan together while I grab a quick snack from the kitchen. Oh, I'm -a gonna make some noise tonight. It's gonna give you suckers such a fright. I've got a little bitty nap to take. Then I'm gonna make the house shake. Oh, not too much shaking, I hope. That's a cute song, though. Is a Dom Rakesh Sally? Damn it! Oh, jeez, I um didn't know you were still here. Yeah, hey, I thought I had the place to myself too. I guess it's just you and me then. Yeah. Well, this is embarrassing. I can't believe she caught me singing like a crappy ten-year-old. Hey, I was gonna go take care of a couple things in my room. This was just a quick snack. You wanna hang out a bit, though? We can have dinner together or something. I gotta make a better impression than this. She's such a shy girl. Being alone in the house with me, she might think I'm just a creep who wants to avoid her or something. Sure, sounds like fun. This is a little awkward. We didn't get off to the best start. Okay, see you back down here in an hour or so. Hopefully when we get back together, it won't be so bad. Sorry, Anne. Well, I definitely needed a nap. As soon as my head hit my pillow, I was out. By the time I woke up, about three hours had gone by. Crap! Anne must be so pissed. I go downstairs looking to apologize, but she's actually not there. I go back upstairs and look carefully into her room. Sitting at her desk with a pencil in her teeth, Anne is poring over some book. I guess she got tired of waiting for me and decided to go back to studying. Seeing as I'm the dumbass that fell asleep, it wouldn't be very nice of me to interrupt her with a stupid belated attempt to hang out. No, I think I'm better off chalking this one up to a lesson learned and moving on. I head back to my bedroom and lay back down. May as well just sleep the rest of the night out. Ah, Max. I felt bad about that one. Uh... I don't mean the sweater. Okay, Rakesh. Hmm, it does occur to me that money could be a bit of an issue at some point. Well, we'll keep it studying until our money gets to $100, and then I will schedule work these days, I think. I think we'll try that. Might as well get some grades. 
Don't want to be complete delinquents or complete book nerds. Let's have a little balance in our life. It's the first time my band's had practice in a while, and I need to make sure I've got everything. All right, we can take Sally with us this time. After the jumping jack competition. I'm pretty sure I've got it all as I grab up my good amp and take it downstairs. Sally and Anne have been talking in the common room since I started all this. Hmm. What have they been scheming? I give him a nod as I pack the amp into my old beater van. I got the van a couple of years ago as a way to get to my crew to gigs. Makes a good way to haul all the equipment around, too. I pop back into the house quickly just to let them know I'm heading out. Okay, I think that's it. Sorry for the interruption, ladies. I'm out to band practice. I'll probably be a while, so tell Dominic not to freak out if he hears me coming in late. Finally ready to start jamming, huh? Damn right. It's been a while, so I'm itching to jam with my boys. Sounds like a lot of fun. We've never really heard your whole band do its thing, just you practicing. Um, we were actually just discussing it, and, um, do you think we could come watch? We don't mean to be intrusive or anything. It's just the kind of thing we don't get to see very often. Hey, listen, the guys are always happy to show off for a beautiful lady, so I'm fine if you two want to show up. Does one of you have a car you can follow in? I don't actually own a car. This town's pretty well laid out for college students. Honestly, I only know a few people who even have cars. I think Dominic has one for going to meetings. I know I don't have a car. Well, crap, that's a problem. I only have enough room in the van for one. Aw, we hadn't thought of that. Yeah, that sucks. How will we decide who goes? I don't know, is naked mud wrestling off the table? Stop that, Max. What do you think, Anne? Hey, it's my band, shouldn't I get a say? Well, I mean... I don't want to make it too personal. I feel like the energy at Latin House has really balanced out lately. We're reaching a good equilibrium. Um, well, he does have a point. We may as well just let him decide. It is his van and his band, after all. Sally gives Anne a questioning look, but shrugs. Okay then, Big Shot, who's it going to be? Hey, it's not like I'm choosing who's going out to give up food for the rest of the year. No, no, you want the choice. Go ahead. Yeah, you are right. So who would you like to bring along? I think I may have stepped in it this time. Both of them are looking at me, smiling expectantly. There will probably be hurt feelings on either side of this choice. Which way to go? Uh... Well, I'm never going to get anywhere if I worry about hurting feelings. No, nope, this is a golden opportunity to show off, and I think I'm going to take it. Hmm, well, which one to take? This is a difficult choice. I don't suppose you'll have a jumping jack competition for me, would you? Don't be a pig, Max. I'm joking, jeez. Besides, I thought you were into pigs. Remember the whole oink-oink conversation? <laughs> Uh-oh, I think Anne's going to throw something at me. Uh, let's see, I guess this time I'll choose... Uh, Sally. All right, Sally, you're up. Yay! Aw, Anne looks so disappointed. Yeah. Anne looks disappointed, but hopefully not too upset. I'll let Dominic know you'll be late. Thanks, Anne. I'll make sure you get to come another time, okay? It's okay. Go on. Let's go, Max. I want to see this band of yours. Aw, poor Anne. We head out to the van and buckle up. Our practice space is about 20 minutes away. It's actually a small bar, but the owner, Gaz, is a buddy of mine. He doesn't mind if we practice our stuff before the bar opens. He even lets us perform every once in a while if he doesn't have someone bigger booked. We pull up and I unlock the back so Sally can help me unload. Hey, I never signed up for manual labor! Oh? And here I thought you were more than just a pretty face. You are far too clever by half, Max. Give me something. Gimme! Oh, what's this now? I know I brought you on this thing to get the babes, Max. I just didn't think you'd start so early. Memphis, bro. It's been too long. Also, who brought who onto this thing, you glory-stealing son of a bitch? Memphis and I give each other a quick hug. I can tell he's eyeing Sally, though. Uh-oh, he didn't eye Anne at all. He's eyeing Sally already. That's gonna be trouble. 
Memphis, Sally, one of my roommates. She wanted to come see how a real band shreds it up. Sally, Memphis, my best bud and the best basses I've ever heard. Pleasure's all mine, my dear. Come leave that heavy lifting to the pack beast and I'll show you our accommodations. He offers an arm for Sally. Memphis loves to turn on the gentleman act when there's a lady present. Oh no you don't. I've already been tricked once and I'm not going back on it. See, that's what a woman with- Oh gosh, that is the wrong voice. <laughs> Thinking about Anne too much. Get into the max mindset. See, that's what a woman with class looks like, Memphis. Besides, you're not getting out of it either, you slackass. Grab the mics. Where's everyone else? Whatever, jackass. Slim's inside banging away. Jerry said he was going to be a couple minutes late. Of course, you know what a couple minutes late means for him. Yeah, whatever. We can get started without him. Did you work out the lyrics for Take Him Home yet? Yeah, I think you're going to like it. Don't you write the songs, Max? Is that what you've been telling people? And you call me the glory stealer. Shut it. I tend to write the music, but... Uh... I'm not exactly a great lyricist. I've written a couple of our numbers, but Memphis does most of that stuff. Just remember, without me, you'd be a damn beat poet. Ah, the low lights, the cigarette smoke, the constant finger snapping. Yeah, that suck. I guess you can stay. Oh, thank you, sir. May I? <laughs> I like this interaction a lot more, actually. By the time we get all the gear inside and set up, our last band member has shown up. Thanks for showing up, Jerry. Is Gaz around? No, he said he's gonna go catch a nap before he opens the place up tonight. Set to lock up when we leave. Alright. Everyone, this is Sally. She'll be watching us practice for tonight. Which means we're in show-off mode, so let's make it flashy, gang. We warm up a little, make sure the sound is working, and then set off into a nice practice session. I'm really happy we have an audience tonight. Every band is a little stronger, a little more cohesive when they're putting on a show when it really matters, even if it's only for one person. We go through the songs we know best first, just to keep them strong. Sally appreciates those, claps along, and cheers afterwards and everything. Woohoo! Then we work on a couple of the ones we're not super happy with. We're a cohesive unit tonight, working out the kinks when we find them, collaborating when we're not sure where to go next. A bit of experimentation leads to some breakthroughs, and before we know it, we're jamming along pretty happy with what we've done. Finally, it's time to wrap things up. I mop my brow with a towel and make Jerry start taking the stuff out to the van. That's what he gets for being late. Slim actually gets up to go chat with Sally, while Memphis comes over to give me a high five. Nice one, brother. I think we really nailed down High Noon Sunday. High Noon Sunday? Yeah, yeah. And you're right, I did like your lyrics. Thanks, man. So, hey, what's up with Sally? You into her? You almost never bring people by rehearsal. Well, yeah, I like her. I don't know if I'm into her. Why are you asking? What's up? Nothing, nothing. That's just a fine drink over there, and if you're not gonna take a sip... Eh, Leave it alone for now, Memphis. I don't need drama with my roommates, you know? Besides, she only just met you, and she already thinks you're a rock star. I think you've made enough of an impression for one day. Huh, I hear you though, man. I'll leave it alone while you figure it out. Just remember you can't have all the cute ones. We ready to go, Max? Yeah, yeah, let's get going. Okay! Take it, gang. I'm out. You're gonna lock up, Memphis. No, Slim said she'd do it. Okay. That was an interesting interaction. I like that. I think I, when I play through uh, Rakesh's route, I'm going to bring Sally along just to introduce her to Memphis and so forth. Sally and I hop in the full van and make our way back home. That was a lot of fun, Max. Thanks for bringing me. No problem. I'm glad you were there. Kicks us up a notch, you know? Um, what's Slim's real name? She never mentioned it. I was kind of surprised she was a female at all. A female? <laughs> uh... Lady? Woman? Gal? Girl pal? I don't know. I mean, uh, she's a fe of the female species. Ooh. She's a damn good drummer. That's all that matters to me. Her name's Rebecca, but she wears that hood all hoodie all the time, so we all just took to calling her Slim. Ha! <laughs> That's cute. You've got a good band, Max. I'd love to see you guys with a real audience someday. I'd like that, too. 
trust me, I'll invite you to our next show for sure. Even though I already promised Anna would do that. But anyway. I guess I probably should figure out what's up with Sally. Before Memphis decides I've taken too long. I'll hear you, brother. Don't worry. We're gonna 100% that. 100% affection. Oh dear. This will not stand! Do you hear me? Oh jeez, what is it now? Something's got Dominic hot and bothered. I guess I should see what it is. I poke my head around the corner to see Dominic yelling at Isabella and Rakesh. What is this crap? You've all known about the inspection tomorrow for two weeks now. Am I just talking to myself at our meetings? To be honest, yes. I agree that you may be speaking more to yourself than us. Will you two shut up and clean this travesty? Hey, I have things to do tonight. But we work so hard to arrange the room properly. Isabella, your plans are cancelled, effective immediately. Rakesh, you'll be damn lucky if I can convince them that all the paint around here is for an art class. This is all beside the point. Mouth shut. Commence cleaning. Oh man, watching Dushnik throw a hissy fit is probably the best comedy gold I've had all week. I'm tempted to rub it in. Though I think if I show my face, I'll probably try to put it to work. Might not be worth interfering. Not this time. Maybe I'll go TP the bathroom while they're busy. No, nah, I think he's gonna have his hands full with Rakesh anyway. Besides, if Domna gets fired, who knows what they'll throw at us next. Better the devil you know, I think. Time to go cram all my crap into the closet and call it a night. That sounds like a much more productive plan. I gotta beat my speed record. Do you know which bus goes by the downtown bookstore, Dominic? They've got a really great sale going on, and I don't want to be lugging all the books back on foot. What's this? Little Anne is off on an adventure? I pull my head out of the refrigerator and look over to see Anne with three empty bags over one shoulder. Apparently she's pretty serious about book shopping. Hmm. I do have transportation. I guess I could take her. Or I could just leave it to Dushnik. He's probably just as interested in the books as she is. Leave it to the Domikins. Eh, I'm no taxi service. Besides, Dominic is probably more than ready to take her. If the way he eyes her is any indication. Dominic! Shame on you. Nah, I think I'll sit this one out. I've got better things to do. Well, have fun, you two. <laughs> Not too much fun. Just enough. <laughs> Ooh, Halloween! I haven't even had time to think about Halloween. Isabella told me about this party two weeks ago, but I hadn't even thought about it until a couple days ago. Hey Max, are you ready yet? Come on, we've got to get there by eight! Hang on, I'm almost done getting changed. Luckily, my keyboardist Jerry does makeup as a hobby. He hooked me up with a pretty sweet costume. Even if it is a little last minute. This is going to take me a few to get on, okay? Meanwhile, I'm going to call Chad and let him know I'm on my way. I'm out in five minutes, so don't be late, okay? Isabella leaves, dialing her cell phone. <clears throat> I forgot about Chad. I'm sure he'll be dressed up as something stupid, like a football player. I gotta admit, I was looking forward to hanging out with Isa and whatever hot-ass outfit she chose. Plus, whoever else shows up, but yeah. I certainly don't feel like spoiling my mood dealing with that giant slab of stupid Chad. Now I'm rethinking if I even want to go. I guess there'll be plenty of eye candy if I do go. Chad can't stop me from looking. I don't know. Whatever. Well, Sally's not gonna be there. Maybe we should just take a break from the whole Halloween thing. <laughs> We're gonna do it one more time next time, after all. It's just a party. It's not like there won't ever be another one this year. <laughs> Shut the door, lock it, and it's time to crank the tunes. The great thing about being an adult on Halloween is you don't have to go begging for candy. Me and my emergency bag of candy are gonna have plenty of fun seeing what horror flicks are on TV. Sounds like my kind of Halloween. And... Right. Another week down. Should we sh I think we'll do one more. Why not? 
Do I have to have as much sleep, though? Well, let's not tempt fate. You know what? I think this is going to be a good week. For a change, I'm actually getting out the door without running to something crazy delaying me. I'm sure that won't happen today, because, I mean, the last few weeks have been ridiculous. Everyone else has already gone to class, so I lock the door behind me as I head out. Or at least, I thought the others had gone off to class. Looks like Sally's coming back. And she's definitely smuggling something. I know that look very well. Jacket clutched at her chest, eyes darting all over the place, slightly hunched over like she doesn't want something to fall out. I walk out the gate and give her a wave as I turn toward my class. Oh! Max! Um... Hey! I, uh, forgot a book. Wow, she's pretty terrible at lying about it, too. Sally runs past me and heads to the door without looking me in the eye. I can tell she's struggling to keep her jacket closed and get into her pockets at the same time. I suppose I could go over and help, but that just means getting tied up into whatever crazy scheme she's got going on today. I just don't know if it's worth it. She's worth it. Oh, who am I kidding? When have I ever run from trouble? I sneak up behind Sally as she struggles to hold her jacket closed while opening the door. Why would you sneak up behind her? I don't think anybody will care that much about a bag of weed. So what? Crack? Ah! Max, you jerk! Don't scare me like that and shut up! It's nothing of the sort! Sally struggles with her jacket for a few moments, looking around shiftily. I really love Max's ensemble, by the way. Everyone else is gone, right? It's Dominic's TA day, right? I think so. Why? What's... Before I can finish my sentence, I hear it. A small whimper like a small dog whining. Is that what I think it is? <sighs> Sally opens her jacket, revealing a tiny puppy. Well, that's certainly not what I was expecting. I can tell. Crack? Really? I was just joking. Where'd you find him? He was just wandering the street down by the main avenue. What? Did you ask around about him? Of course! I don't just go around stealing dogs. I didn't say that. Anyway, he was about to go wandering into traffic, so I scooped him up. I looked all over, but nobody claimed him. I don't see any tags or anything. Who would abandon a cute little guy like this? I don't know. It happens a lot around college towns like this, though. People get a pet and then have to move away for some reason, and they just abandon their poor animals. Sally looks like she's about to cry just thinking about it. Well, for now, let's get him set up inside. Come on. I unlock the door, step through, and take off my winter coat and pants and shirt and turtleneck. You do know this is totally against the rules, though, right? Dominic will freak if he finds out. Well, I'm not telling if you're not. Hey, I've got your back. I'm always up for some rule-breaking. Especially if it pisses off Dushnik. Here, stay here and cover him up. I'll make sure the coast is clear. Thank you, Max. I really appreciate your help. So does little Vegemite. Vegemite? Suddenly I hear rustling from the kitchen. I try to sneak a bit closer. That's when I see Dominic's hand pushing the door open. Crap! I've only got a moment to figure out what to do before he comes out here. Count to 35 before coming back in. I slam the door on Sally, shoving her back outside. Now what to do? <laughs> My f I like doing this part. <laughs> Man, people go to class is so lame, they just can't get laid or nothing. I'm not like those lamos. Am I right? If I've got Dushinik Peg, there's one thing he can't pass up. The chance to lecture on no good like me. I walk over to the kitchen as loudly as I can. Ha! Those suckers actually thought I was going to class? Class is for losers. Losers who can't get laid at that. Oh, is that so? What? Dominic, what are you doing here? I am both shocked and also surprised. I'll just bet you are, you slacker jackass. I can't believe you thought you'd just get out of your classes and nobody would be around to call you on your crap. I maneuver into a seat behind Dominic, who rounds on me with a full head of steam. <sighs> I'm definitely going to pay for this. For one thing, have you considered how much you're paying for this? Or, I'm sorry, your parents are paying for this, am I right? That's incredibly disrespectful to them and to yourself. After all... Blah 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 blah. 
I tune Dushnik out as the doorknob handle turns quietly. Sally pokes her head in, sees the situation, and begins to sneak up the stairs. She gives me a look of sympathy as Dominic continues to rail on. Yeah, but who cares about that stuff? I don't even know what he was saying, but it's enough to set him off again, keeping his attention squarely on me. I'll have to check on Sally later tonight. It's worth a lecture to help her out. You know, in the time you've been sitting here lecturing me, I could have made it to class. <sighs> Get out, you jackass! Too easy. It's really too easy. Good grief. Oh, crap. Shouldn't have checked my email. One of my professors wants to see me after class. This is never good. See me after class is right up there with we need to talk for bad indicators. I guess I could always just, av just avoid the whole thing, but Professor Tass' temper is pretty legendary. If I miss the appointment, who knows what he'll do. We'll skip it. I'll just split the difference and send him an email explaining why I can't show up today. Hopefully that'll keep him off my back. Okay, now to think of an excuse. I got it. Sorry, I can't make it after class. I have to meet my parents who are coming to town. They're taking me up before they go on their second honeymoon. And send and pray. Oh well, it was just an extra credit assignment anyway. With your grades, you could have used it. Far be it from me to stand between a student and their ignorance, though. I'm just a teacher, after all. Yeah, I'm in trouble. Oh, well. It's just Professor Task. I'm sure it'll be just fine. This makes no sense. Gah! Doesn't it just figure? I finally decide to do my homework, and now I can't figure out how to do this one. Uh, I'm just gonna give this up as a bad idea. Everything all right in here? Wait. Max studying. Wait, maybe I walked into Anne's room on accident. Shut up, douchebag. Who asked you? Can you blame me for being shocked, slacker? Did you call me, Dominic? What? Oh, sorry, no, I was just giving slacker here a hard time. Oh, studying, Max? Good for you. See, she knows how to encourage a guy, Dushnik. Still, the last thing I need is these two breathing down my necks. I could always ask for help, I guess. Not this time. I think, oh, we can, we can hack it out. Or not. <laughs> nope, I'm definitely giving this whole thing up as a bad idea. You're right, Dommy. I am a slacker, and this sounds like a good time to slack off. I grab my jacket and blow past the two of them. Max, wait! I wave goodbye to her as I go. Meanwhile, she rounds on Dominic, giving him the stink eye. <laughs> Getting Dominic, but Dominic into trouble. Looks like I got Dushnik in trouble, so that's a nice bonus. He didn't even look phased by that. Ah, why isn't my alarm on? I could have sworn I set it on time. Damn it! I fly through my room, picking out a quick outfit to wear today. I look at the clock. If no one's in the way, I might be able to grab a shower. Woo! If there's one downside to having five roommates and only one actual bathroom, it's early morning traffic. With everyone's class schedules, people always seem to be coming or going in the morning. Of course, this means plenty of opportunities for... mishaps, if you're that kind of guy. Which, for the record, I'm not. I swear. Well, not often. Barely ever. Not that Dushnik hasn't laid down the law, anyway. He pretty much threatened to take me to jail himself if he got so much as one complaint. And that's why I'm so mad I overslept this morning. It just ruins everyone's schedule. If someone isn't there, it could cause me to be late. It's almost not worth the hassle. I mean, I'm not gonna say I've never gone to class without a shower before. Though a quick sniff test tells me I'm gonna have to sit far away from people if I decide to skip it today. Skip. Ah, oh, screw it. I'll just tell people I was out all night after a show. That's part of the rocker mystique, right? Right? Okay, probably not. Maybe I can make it part of the rocker mystique? Whatever, at least I won't have to listen to a lecture from my professor. That makes it worth it, I'm sure. Our money is almost completely gone. Uh, I feel like utter crap. 
Why didn't I get a sweater or something? Oh, I make polar bears look like wimps. No, I make polar bears look like geniuses. Runny nose, fever, feels like I'm trying to swallow a cactus. I think I'm just going to die here for a little while. I can even hear my ancestors calling me towards the light. Wait. No, that's Dushnik in the hallway. What are they talking about? I press my ear against the door. His fever is incredibly high. I can't believe we're all going out. I just want to make sure someone is here to keep an eye on him. It's just a cold, Tom. I've seen worse. All he really needs to do is get some sleep. And while he's doing that, the rest of us can get out of here. I don't know. It is pretty high. Then again, if I don't see my study group tonight, we're going to fail our agriculture project. Look, we've all got stuff to do. I'm not saying we don't. I'm just saying that someone should stick around to make sure he doesn't get worse. It would be a kindness to him. I didn't know I was such a burden. Not like I asked to get sick. Whatever. Maybe if I can muster up the strength to get out of bed, I can make the decision for them. Eh, then again, I was doing some pretty good dying back there. That sounds pretty good, too. We'll play it since Sally's there. Meh, I can die when I'm dead. Or something like that. I grab a pair of pants off the floor and start dragging myself to the door. So can you stay, Rakesh? Perhaps. I had planned to watch the stars from the hill tonight. That's not much. <sighs> We've all got something to do tonight. I thought you were going to put on some pants. Or you could just forget about it and get out of here so some of us can get some damn sleep. Max, you should be in bed. And you should all be quiet when discussing the terrible burden of making sure I don't croak. Yet, here we are. Sorry, Max, it's not like you're a burden. We just have things that we need to do out of the house tonight. Seriously, you idiot, go back to bed. We'll sort it out in a second. Don't do me any favors. It'd serve you right if I did kill over on your watch. My plans can keep another night. I can stay and watch over Max. Really, I just want this whole thing over with. Just go. You dummies. Look, when I got up this morning, I put on my big boy pants. Would you all just get going so I can pass out in peace? And, you know, stuff. <laughs> the others look around at each other and shrug. Seriously, I've had way worse than this. I'll be fine. Look, uh, thanks. Just get some rest, okay? I'll try to make it look like a murderer broke in, just in case. I've seen your room, Max. It already does. Shut up. I'm sick. Good grief. The others leave or get disintegrated. Who knows? I'm already on my way to bed. I can barely get any sleep, honestly. I feel like such crap. I toss and turn through the night, either cold as crap or hotter than hell. By morning, I feel like I've been through the ringer. I'm feeling a bit better, but not much. I'm not really interested in getting up just yet, though. A bit more sleep never hurt, after all. Especially if you didn't sleep the night before. College farm! Yes, we can do the college farm job next time. Yahoo!